Davis, and welcome to another edition of the Wealth Guardians Radio Show. Remember, we tell you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. And for those of you who don't know, my name's Doug Ray. I'm the host of this program, the Wealth Guardians Radio Program, and president and founder of Ray Financial Group. Ray Financial Group is a professional, independent firm working with pre-retirees and retirees in all areas of retirement and estate planning and wealth transfer. We also provide asset protection, tax reduction, and distribution uh, types of programs. We are fiduciaries with a fiduciary duty. We have offices in Charlotte and in the triad in Clements. The objective of our program is to educate and inform you, the listener, of up-to-date, relevant, and important information in the pre-retirement, retirement, and estate planning arena. So, again, welcome to the show. I look forward to spending the next 30 minutes with you to give you some solid financial information that hopefully will help you make a big difference in your retirement and and estate planning. And let me, as I always do, give a big thank you to all of our service members that are out there in harm's way. Thank you, men and women, for your sacrifices and what you do for us. All righty. So today we're talking about retirement rules that don't apply anymore. And these are just, you know, you got to welcome yourself to the new retirement realities. Retirement today is so much different than it used to be. I mean, you know, think about it. People who were working back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you know, they probably planned on maybe even have the old-fashioned traditional retirement where they they didn't need to worry too much about saving for retirement because when they retired, they had a solid pension plan along with Social Security, which combined took care of most of their retirement needs. Thus, you know, they could rely on their employers and government to take care of them in retirement. But unfortunately, that's just not the case anymore. Very few of you have uh, the company pension plan, that security that it brings. Companies have just gotten rid of the responsibility of those traditional pension plans and put that responsibility square on the worker's shoulders by offering defined contribution plans, otherwise known as the 401k or the 403b. It's the employee's responsibility to put money back for their retirement, not the company's. And this is not good, as many people struggle and don't do well managing their own 401k and 403b plans. Investment management is difficult, and most people are just not properly educated in how to do it. And unfortunately, a lot of plan providers don't give you any advice. They just let you drift on your own. You know, it's like trying to build your own house. Most people can't do it. They don't have a clue how to do it. They can make a lot of serious mistakes along the way. So the same goes true with investing. It's very difficult, and people make many costly mistakes over their working years and end up with not near enough set aside for retirement. Employees today can't rely on the government as much as they used to either. Social Security is a system that's underfunded, and it will have to go through some major changes in order to save it for the future. In addition to this, there are a host of new forces that are altering the traditional approach to retirement planning. We have insanely high rising health care costs. We've got historically low interest rates for fixed income investments like CDs and money markets. Those people used to rely on for income and retirement. And the complex tax system that if you don't know what you're doing and how to save properly, you could end up having all your sources for retirement income subject to taxes. And in all probability, higher taxes in the future. We just got off a very successful taxes and retirement workshop where I'd say well over a 100 folks came in on two different nights and and learned a little bit about how the Social Security system uh, and taxes and retirement really can put you in a higher bracket than when you're working, believe it or not. So those are just a few examples of the many differences between retirement past and retirement today. Thus, many of the common and understood rules of the past just simply don't apply anymore. And there are new rules, principles, and realities that have to be followed. So we're going to address some of those old rules of retirement planning today and explain why they just don't apply anymore. Well, hang on your hats. Let's get started. Here's one. My expenses will be lower in retirement. 
Well, that certainly was the way it was for a lot of people. But unfortunately, it's not very common anymore. Now, some expenses could be lower in retirement, but certainly not all of them. In fact, some expenses could very well and could be much higher in retirement, such as health care. Even though we've not technically been in a high inflationary time period the last several years, it does feel like we have in many areas. The cost of goods and services is going to continue to increase as time goes on. We all know that. So that coupled with health care expenses, people are living longer, means you're not going to be able to rely on the old staple of lower expenses in retirement. In fact, many people will have to plan on higher expenses in retirement. Things just simply cost more today than they used to, and you got to plan on that long with the possibility of living quite a long time in retirement. I tell people all the time, 20, 30 years in retirement is not uncommon. We see it all the time. So unfortunately, you just cannot live by that old rule that your expenses are going to be lower in retirement than they are during your working years. All right, here's another one. You can start saving early and rely on compound interest. Well, investing early so you can benefit from that compound interest, it really is a smart way to go. The early you start saving and investing for your retirement, the better off you're going to be. However, it requires much more than just saving early in your life. We talked about this on, on previous shows. We've talked about how to handle extreme volatility in the markets today. You have to have the correct investment management system in place to avoid those big hits in retirement. You just cannot afford another 2008 when you're retired. All the math changes. I harp on this, and I repeat it over and over again. I I hope it's sinking into your head. It's just not about saving and relying on compound interest. You need to have the right investment management approach to help prevent those big hits. With all the volatility in the markets, in order to be able to handle and get that compound interest, the key to growing money with compound interest is avoiding the large hits. All right. So here's another one. Will you be able to rely on a pension as a main source of income for retirement? Well, we touched on that a few moments ago. There's just not that many pension plans anymore. If you've got one, consider yourself very, very lucky. You know, very company, very few companies today offer that traditional pension plan where employees can accumulate money for retirement and the company will pay you an income once you retire, an income that is there for your life. And if you select the proper uh, payout options for your spouse's lifetime. Few companies still offer that, but not many, and the ones that do, most have gone through the steps of either freezing that pension plan or in the process of terminating that plan altogether. So in other words, if there's still a pension plan on the books, many times it isn't going to grow anymore, and the benefits are not going to increase anymore. Or the plan's just going to get terminated, and you're going to be offered a lump sum check, and then what are you going to do? Many of you, even if you have a pension plan, also have that option. Do I take the pension or do I take the rollover, the lump sum? It's called a cash balance plan. I see people all the time that have to to select that option. 75% of Americans select the cash, the lump sum. Now, why is that? Well, here's something you got to think about. If you're lucky enough to have a pension, if you take that pension versus the cash rollover, and if your company goes under, then the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation takes the plan over. And in most cases, your pension gets cut in half. Ask your friends who work for U.S. Air and American Airlines about what happened to them. Okay, here's another one. Well, before we do that, if you just joined the show, welcome to the Wealth Guardians. Uh, We're here every Saturday morning at 9.30 talking about important facts uh, for retirees and pre-retirees right here on 94.5 WPTI. So welcome into the show. Let's start our, our talk about Social Security. Will you be able to rely on Social Security? Social Security is a staple for retirement income. People paid a lot of money into it. 
They expect and deserve to get as much out of it as possible. Unfortunately, there are a lot more workers today taking Social Security and a lot less contributing to Social Security than in the past. It's kind of a messed up plan, to be honest with you. Soon this system's going to be paying out more in benefits than it's going to be taking in. So they got to make some changes. Now, it's probably not going to affect anybody who's currently on Social Security. And I tell people it's probably not going to affect you if you're 55 and older at the time of the change. Most likely, you're going to get your Social Security benefit exactly as you see it today. Maybe some small, minor changes. But the 55 and younger age cohort, you can probably expect some some big changes. Well, let me pause right now and, and make this offer to you. We've only got just a couple minutes left in this segment. You know, I really would love to sit down and talk to you and, and, and meet you and, and, and work with you on your retirement planning. If you're within five years of retirement, or even if you're already retired and you want a second opinion, or my goodness, if you don't even have a first opinion, give us a call. The number is 336-391-3409. Come into my office, sit down, let's have a chat, have a cup of coffee, and uh, and go over your situation. We've been able to help folks improve their cash flow, their taxes in retirement. We've helped uh, increase or, or better their life insurance plans. If you still got the old-fashioned life insurance program, maybe you can trade it up for the, the brand-new models, which offer living benefits such as home health care and long-term care. That might be a huge um, boon to your, to your retirement efforts. All right. So glad you joined us today. This is the Wealth Guardian Show with Doug Ray, and we will be back in just a quick moment. Back to the Wealth Guardians Radio Show. We tell you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. We're heard at 9:30 a.m. Saturday mornings, right here on 94.5 WPTI, and like us on Facebook at the Wealth Guardians Radio Show. So, we also want you to call us. We can be reached at 336-391-3409 if you have a question. We're going to also start a uh, a new program where. Uh, every week, I'm going to collect your questions over email, and then one show per month is going to be dedicating to answering uh, those questions. So if you've got a question out there, email me. It's Doug at TheWealthGuardians.com, Doug at TheWealthGuardians.com, or you can visit our website at www.TheWealthGuardians.com. So today we've been talking about myths in retirement, some commonly common things that people thought they understand but have completely changed over the course of of the past several years. Now, here's a big one. I won't outlive my money if I just withdraw 4% a year. Well, when deciding how to pull from your retirement nest egg each year for income, you know, many experts generally recommend the 4% rule. I've heard this pretty much all my investing career. Sometimes it got as high as 5%. However, it's tough without proper risk management in place just because of today's volatile investment arena and low interest rate environment. The markets have been and can be all over the place. You remember 2000 to 2003. You certainly remember 2008 and 9, how the markets absolutely fell apart, losing half their value. Many people started calling their 401k a 201k. It can and probably will happen again. So when we talk about pulling money from your nest egg, you don't necessarily want to go uh, by taking standard percentages. Life's got a strange way of ruining standard plans. You know, anything can happen that might give you no other choice but to withdraw more than your set percentage. So you need a plan in place to minimize the downturns of the market and alter those payout rates each year depending upon your situation. A lot of factors go into income planning these days. So you need to work with a retirement specialist. 
someone who has specialized training in wealth distribution. You need to understand this, folks. The Wall Street firm's business model is built on wealth accumulation over time, not wealth distribution. You, when you get into retirement, when you get close to retirement, you need to find somebody who has specialized training in wealth distribution, retirement planning. Look for somebody who has credentials in this area. I carry the RICP credential from the American College. That is the Retirement Income Certified Professional. We have courses to get that designation that dig deep in all facets of retirement planning. Look for somebody who has a CHFC, a CFP, a CLU. Those are even deeper dives into mastering the field of retirement planning. You need a specialist in retirement that can help guide you through all the landmines out there. Okay, let's move on to another uh, myth, I guess we, we call it. This one just just kills me. It rocks my day when somebody tells me this. My spouse will take care of me in retirement. Well, I actually had somebody in my office. This has been over a year ago, maybe two years now, who was dead serious about that when he told it to me. And I looked at him and I said, really? If your wife, when you're 62 right now, can't pull your 200-pound butt off the toilet and put it in bed, how is she possibly going to do it when you're 82? Now, be realistic. You know, there's there's a lot of issues with this, three in particular. One is from a financial standpoint. One's from a health care standpoint. And then there's another from from a death standpoint. So let's start with a financial one. No matter how strong your union is today, There's no guarantee you're going to remain married or be married throughout your whole retirement. The so-called great divorce, it's becoming more common, unfortunately. Divorce rates for adults who are age 50 and older has doubled in the last 25 years, and that's a a Pew Research uh, Center data. So you may need to prepare for that possibility that you'll no longer have that dual income in the household during your golden years. Let's look at it from a healthcare standpoint. A lot of people say, well, if we get sick, we'll just care for each other. Unfortunately, taking care of someone is very difficult to do. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress on the caregiver. Uh, in, in that example, it's your spouse. You know, many people try to do it, but it affects the quality of their life. Almost in every case I see this happen, the caregiver's health declines. It starts to decline even faster than the one she, she's carrying on. Generally, it's you know the wife caring for, for the husband. Because, guys, let's face reality, we do get sicker sooner and we die sooner than our, than our wives do. So there will come a breaking point for that caregiver, the spouse, and they will no longer be able to care for you. All right? Finally. From a death standpoint, even if you stay married throughout your retirement years, which, you know, we all hope you do, at some point, one spouse will pass first. This will likely cause a loss of income. So again, probably at some point in your lifetime, you'll not be able to rely on a portion of a spouse's income. Again, in today's retirement world, Make sure your retirement plan can be successful without a portion of your spouse's income or assets. Remember, Social Security, the remaining spouse gets the higher of the two checks. One check is lost forever. Plan for it. All right, let's move on to the next retirement rule or staple that just doesn't apply anymore, and that's retiring means never working again. You know, life can bring many, many unexpected events. There's no guarantee that retirement will mean relaxing until you die. You know, without a proper plan, which many people do not have, there's always the possibility that the amount you've saved isn't going to be enough to sustain your lifestyle. So many people find themselves in a position where they got to go back to work 
or at least, you know, part-time work uh, just to help, uh, you know, support their lifestyle. So now sometimes it's always not always about money or expenses. Sometimes people just get bored. You know, they got to have something to do. So they might want to pick up a fun job. Maybe, you know, I always use the uh, marshal on a golf course. I've got a lot of clients who who have found jobs ferrying um, rental cars back and forth. You know, they work a half a day doing that. They get out and about and riding up and down the highways, and they enjoy doing that. So that old retirement rule or stable about retiring means never having to work again just, just doesn't apply at all. I tell everybody. Be active in retirement because if you're active, whether you're working part time or you're volunteering uh, for a church or some charity or, or whatever, or you're traveling, enjoying yourself, that's what's going to make a successful retirement for yourself. So the opposite of that one is this myth that says, I'll just work until I die. Well, you know, improvements in health care and technology these days means you might live a lot longer, but it doesn't necessarily mean you'll be healthy enough to work. You might become disabled or chronically ill before you get ready to retire. So there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to work throughout retirement, even if you want to. All right, here's, here's a pet peeve of mine. <clears throat> Some people, because they don't get proper advice handling their 401ks and 403bs, they pick a target date fund named after the year they plan to retire. Well, that sounds simple. What's wrong with it? Target date funds are very popular, and instead of picking individual investments and mutual funds and so forth, it's a whole heck of a lot easier to say, okay, if I'm going to retire in 2030, I'll just pick that 2030 fund. It's right there. It's easy. It's one selection, and I'm on and about my day. Well, that fund right now could be pretty aggressive. However, if the market falls apart, which it could, um, that fund is going to fall apart. And I have seen this happen over and over again. Even if you pick a target date fund that's closer than 2030, say you pick 2020, I have seen some of these funds absolutely get blistered in 2008. And why is that? Well, it's because the idea behind these funds is that as you get closer to that target date of retirement, they get more conservative with the management. But that doesn't necessarily happen, and it certainly hasn't happened in the past. So can you lose 10, 20, 30 percent in a target date fund that's two, three, four years out? Absolutely. I've personally seen it happen. And what does that do to a pre-retiree's retirement plan? Kind of blows it up in smoke, doesn't it? Got to be very, very careful of these target date funds. All right, we're getting close to the end of the show here, so uh, let me get to um, another little myth. Work until you have a certain number of uh, dollars set aside. Well, you know, there was a commercial by an insurance company a few years ago, folks carrying around these orange numbers, and that was their, that was their number. And uh, that's kind of a myth. There's no certain number. You know, somebody came into the office the other day and said, I always heard you got to have a million dollars set aside. Not necessarily. So many factors depend upon, you know, do you have a pension? Do you plan on taking Social Security earlier? Do you have debt? Do you have a mortgage? You know, you can live a nice lifestyle and not have a million dollars. I put plans together for people all the time who have much less than a million dollars set aside for retirement, and they're going to do very, very well for themselves in retirement. The key there is not to lose any of that money. So what I'd love to have you do is set aside some time to come in and sit down and chat with me about your specific goals and needs in retirement. Let me put that five-point master plan together with a Social Security optimization drawn in with a tax-efficient withdrawal plan drawn up. It's free. There's no obligation on your part. All you need to do is call the office at 336-391-3409. 336-391-3409. 
You don't have to have a million dollars set aside to have a successful retirement. Let me prove it to you. All right. Thank you for listening today to the Wealth Guardians radio show. We'll see you next week. 